today is finally the day that we're going to see if my budget turbo Miata will start back up for the season. Now, I did a ton of things to this car since last season, since you saw it last. And first, before we actually try to start this car, I want to show you everything that I did to this car since last season. To start out, I went ahead and I added this little carbon Kevlar cooling panel. I mostly did that just to clean this up a little bit and promote a little bit more airflow over to the radiator. I added different clamps on my intercooler piping. These are actually like traditional style hose clamps because the cheap ones that came with all of the Chinese uh, intercooler stuff that I got actually broke when I took them apart. I had like three of those snap on me. So I went to these. They're also lower profile and allow my hood to have more clearance when they're closed. So those are on there. I'm hoping they hold up to boost, but we'll find out pretty quick if they don't. Other things is I had a blue coupler on here before. I didn't like the way it looked and I had a blue fitting right there. Didn't like the way it looked so I went black and red so it sort of matches the rest of the engine bay. I think that looks really good. Um, I ported the turbo that you guys did see the video on. Basically, I ported out the wastegate, so hopefully I'll be able to keep my boost levels in a more reasonable spot now. Hopefully that works out well. Over here, I went ahead and I plugged my intercooler piping because this is where the intake air temperature sensor used to sit. I moved that over here to the side of the intercooler on the cold side to sort of reduce heat soak. Here it's in open air for the most part, whereas up here it was in the engine bay right over this cooling hose. And that basically made it so the sensor heated up and was giving the ECU false reading. So I took care of that. That's most of what I did in the engine bay. I also retorqued down my valve cover bolts because I realized a few of those weren't super tight. And that may have been a source of the oil leaks on this car, but we'll be finding out soon. Either way, I'm going to be resealing that again and doing the cam angle sensor o-ring again just to be sure because I don't want any leaks coming off of this engine. Now moving over to the back of the car here, this thing still has the old battery that it's had in there literally since I got this car five years ago and I honestly don't know if that's going to start this thing. It seemed to be giving up at the end of last season, but I'm going to try to start it on it. If not, I'll go get a battery, but that's sort of the last of my worries right now. Moving under the car. We have a 4.1 open differential in the back. Now this is out of a 1.8, which is why I put that in there. I didn't want to blow up my 1.6 diff, so I took that out and sold it and put this in here because it was readily available. Um, I am still looking for a Torsen, but I'm not trying to spend tons and tons of money. So once a good deal comes up, I'll get one of those on there. And it also has 1.8 axles. The clutch in this car is also now a Flying Miata Stage 1 Happy Meal clutch that once again was used and I refinished it and I'm hoping that it does the trick pretty well. That does also come with a lightweight flywheel, which honestly, I don't know how much I'm going to like it, but we're going to give it a shot. And with all that, that is most of what I've done on this car since last season. Now, let's see if it starts up. I'm a little bit nervous since I put tons of work doing all of these other little things in and stuff could go wrong with that and maybe it just won't start, but I'm really hoping it does. Let's find out. I always forget how great this car looks once it's on the ground. It's always so much lower than I think, which is funny because in terms of Miatas, this thing is really not that low, but it just sits super low. The engine's down here and yeah, I just love the way this car sits on the ground. So now I'm going to push it out of the garage and see if it'll start up. Now that we got this thing out here, I forgot that I did actually wrap the upper part of the downpipe there just to keep heat off of my oil lines and off of my coolant hoses. I was skeptical about that. There are pros and cons about using that stuff, which I could do a video on, but I'm hoping that the pros outweigh the cons in my case. Anyway, I'm pretty nervous. Let's see if this thing will start up and I'm hoping that this goes well. All right, if I remember correctly, I gotta give it a little bit of gas while it's cranking and then it should fire right up if everything goes well. Let's try it. All right, the battery is dead, so I'm gonna get the jump pack on it. All right, I think we got problems. I think I'm gonna need to try a fresh battery and then go from there, but right now, not going too good. All right, Marshall, tell them what's going on with the cars. All right, so conveniently, I just picked up a NB Miata that actually has a brand new battery in it. It's down here. This was literally just put in this car because the previous owner couldn't get this thing started and put a new battery in it. So I have that to move over to my NA. 
less conveniently, we're looking at the wire coming off of the negative terminal here, and it's gonna be hard to see right here, but it's really split at that ground right there, so we're gonna need to rig that up and make that a lot more secure, and then I'll move that battery over and hope this thing barely was holding on here, so it's a good thing that I'm fixing this up because otherwise we could have ran into more problems because putting that much current through a thin wire like this that's really broken could get pretty dangerous and it'll also limit the amount of flow that could go through it. So now I have the NB battery, which is a stock size Miata battery rigged up in my NA here. However, it's much smaller than the other battery that actually was in here. So I'm not able to strap it down, but we will be able to try to start the car right now. All right, so you really can't make this up. The battery in my laptop is also dead. So I am just running a cord to it and I'm gonna see if I could get this thing started with the laptop plugged in. Unfortunately, since I changed some things since last year, I don't really wanna drive it until I get that battery in my laptop sorted out. It's really amazing how poorly all of this stuff is going this year. Normally I take this out and it starts right up, but I guess all of the years of not buying a battery for this thing and just a little bit of bad luck with that laptop is leading to some problems. But let's see if it starts up. Oh baby. All right. Well, that's good at least. I am so happy that this actually started because I was a little bit nervous before. Um, it looks like we're doing pretty decent here. AFR is right now a little bit rich, but to start it up, I have it so it starts out rich and then leans out a little bit, but okay, I'm pretty happy now. At least something went right, and this is a good step forward. What I'm doing now is just looking over the car. I'm gonna let it warm up, get up to operating temperature, and I'm just looking for weird things going on since I did just do that oil line. I got that exhaust wrap on there, which will probably start smoking, and I just wanna make sure that everything's good with this car before I even think of taking it out, even though, like I said, I gotta get that laptop sorted out, and then we'll be able to get this thing finally back on the road. But, man, I am so happy that this actually did start up. That's a good step in the right direction, even though we're not quite to where I thought that I should have been this year, but we'll get there soon. So this thing right now at idle is actually running pretty close to the best that it's ever ran. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now the things that I changed that would affect that is I moved the position of the intake air temperature sensor like I mentioned so it shouldn't heat soak and that should allow it to idle much better and much more consistently. Now I am getting some burn off on the gasket maker there for the turbo. That's just going to burn off for a little bit. I'm expecting that the heat wrap starts doing the same. And once again, I'm just keeping an eye on everything, making sure that everything is going well here. And then I'll take this thing for a drive. All right, so an update on the clutch. The lightweight flywheel definitely makes this thing rev a lot faster. So that's cool. A definite problem though, right now this clutch feels very crunchy. And I could hear some noise coming down from the transmission, so I'm hoping that this is as simple as working on adjusting the slave cylinder, but I have a feeling that this is something worse. So I don't know if I did something wrong when I put this clutch together or what, but this is just another thing that is probably just a little thing that I did wrong and it's gonna come back to bite me. So guys, as a little summary, I did find out what the problem was with the clutch. I wasn't really paying attention and the clutch that I got was a stage two fly in Miata clutch, not a stage one fly in Miata clutch. And that clutch required a different throw out bearing than the stock one. Now I was almost positive that it was a stage one clutch and I was just trying to rush through the job even though it was still taking me a while. And I didn't look to see that the old throwout bearing was a um, upgraded one that was for the stage two clutch. Now that was in the box. I didn't even bother looking at it because I just didn't check. That was extremely dumb and stupid on my part. And it's gonna delay getting this car started up for the year, unfortunately. But now I need to get the correct bearing from Flying Miata, put it in this car, and then this thing should be good to go.
Needless to say, I'm pretty disappointed in myself for not checking that. Um, I really wanted this car out showing you guys what it can do. I wanted to be enjoying this car, but that's not going to happen just yet. So stay tuned. Once I get that sorted out, this thing will be back on the road. For now, we have the NB, which I'm going to be working on getting that on the road, and then we'll be going from there. So with all that said, don't forget to subscribe for lots more Miata content. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't be like me and check everything out first before you install a clutch with the wrong throwout bearing. <laughs>